I'd now like to introduce Ron McCann, the Labor Party candidate for Otaki. Ron. Tinakoto, Tinakoto, Tinakoto Katoa, and thank you very much uh, for having us here today. Thank you, Terry. Great power. Uh, thank you, Bill, for making it. Uh, Bill was the one who, who uh, runs up the trick, and he wouldn't be here without Helen Clark and a certain operation that was funded through her government. So thank you to Helen. And uh, um, also uh, for Terry, if you haven't enrolled, we've got an enrollment form because we know you'll be making your mind up following this, so please come and do that. And we have a, a couple of decisions to make today. Do we want a country that is heading in the same direction that it is now, or do we want something a little bit different? Do we want a new leader, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> this is what we call bigger than life, Jacinda, uh, because we can't get her everywhere. Um, but she's already been to this electorate uh, with our previous leader, and we do have to admit we changed them a few times. But we want to keep them fresh and ready to fight for you and undo the things that this national government has done. Now, I want to tell you a little bit why I'm still here and doing this as a volunteer for the Labour Party and to change the government. Just two weeks ago, I went to um, Foxton to visit um, someone who was about to give birth. Um, she was overdue and she was going to be induced just a couple of days later. Now, she invited me to come and see her house and, well, it was a flat, should we say, and see the quality of it. And um, I went into it. It wasn't great. I had lived in Dunedin. I was a student at law and drama, but I was a young man and I wasn't expecting a child at the time. So there were doors missing because they didn't come with the flat. There were holes to the outside where it had been added on and they hadn't filled them. But what was the most concerning thing was that um, the bathroom ceiling was looking like it was going to come down. It was full of black mould. There was no way she could clean it because the whole thing was sagging. You could see the electrical wires where the fan that used to work once upon a time were. There was nothing that she could do to fix that up. So she went to the property broker and said, look, this is no good. I'm going to have a baby in the house soon, and I don't want to be cleaning that baby in my bathroom with black mould and a ceiling that's going to come down. And can you guess what the answer was? Well, they sent an electrician and, and someone to look at it, and then they said, oh, there's nothing much we can do. Because the property developer, the person who makes the money sitting in Wellington, wasn't going to put extra money into that house because the government won't enforce any minimum standards, which we are going to do through our Healthy Homes Bill. The advice given to that woman by the person representing the landlord was wash your baby in the kitchen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my granddad, you and your parents and your grandparents did not fight to make this country a great country to have it sold off. And thank you, Ron. You'd be a great politician and probably a great comedian as well. But you are right. We didn't. You didn't fight to make this country what it is today. So for that lady, we're going to make sure that we build across New Zealand 100,000 more homes, just like we did in the 1930s. We need to make sure that there is adequate supply, because when there isn't, the landlords get to say what goes and nothing can be done about it. I met another man while door knocking in this electorate, and he needed a cataract operation a little while ago. But do you think the local health board would fund that? No, because they said he was a bit too old and he'd had a heart attack or a stroke once. Now that happens to many of us, and we go on to live long and fruitful lives. But he was going on to live a life in blindness by himself. So he had to borrow money from the bank to pay for that operation himself. Now, I don't want that to be the country that we are going to live in. And Jacinda will keep telling us we have to be positive. We have to be optimistic, and we can be. But what we need to do is stop the tax cuts that are going to the most wealthy that the National Party have promised and put that money back into housing, health, and education. Yeah. And my children's grandmother lived in Wymeria, and, and she lived in one of those council flats that your council is selling. 
She was, and I just have to check the notes, she was 88 when she died. She'd lived there for 15 years, and the current agreement that your council is talking about only lasts for 12 years, which means that she, had she been here now, would have been going, what's going to happen to me? I don't want that to be the country that we live in, so we're going to work with councils to make sure that they can build more social housing, and I realise that's time. <laughs>